All right. Hey, everybody. I am Stephanie Higgs. Please make sure you're joining me over on Instagram at Little Miss Gifted. Today, I wanted to teach you about the best way to um, kind of explore the idea of concept attainment at the beginning of the year with your gifted learners through using Hilda Taba's Taba model. So we will jump right into that together. But what I wanted to share with you first is really that our gifted learners think best from whole to part. The way that they are constantly trying to connect and put the pieces together, they really need to do that through an overarching universal theme. And so what I want you to consider is in whatever space or capacity you can, is there a way that this could be thought out and planned ahead for the entire year? So if you serve lots of different grade levels, could you pre-assign a different universal theme to each grade level for the year? Is that something that would work in your space. If you teach students in just one grade level, I know many of you do that, could you pick one that's going to fit best to sort of encapsulate all of the content that you'll be addressing throughout the year? But our gifted learners, the way that their brains are wired, they really do seem to understand best when they see how all the small daily parts fit into this bigger overarching universal theme. So consider how that could work in your space and then definitely feel free to reach out to me. You can always email me littlemissgiftedteacher at gmail.com or DM DM me on Instagram if you kind of want to talk through that together, if I can help you in any way. Next, I wanted to just show you a few examples if this is something brand new to you. So universal themes or big ideas might include topics like power, order, force, exploration. They could be concepts like relationships or change, structure and conflict, community patterns, progress, survival, heroes. Google it. You will find tons of different ideas for universal themes. And if this is something new to you and gifted education, then you can definitely spend some time thinking about which ones would work best in the capacity where you are serving gifted students. Next, I wanted to just share with you what the Hilda Taba model, so we just call it the Taba model based on the work of Hilda Taba, uh, Hilda Taba, what that actually looks like. And so there's four steps to that. The first step is to introduce that universal theme and give students just a couple quick minutes to generate as many examples of that universal theme as they can. Now, if you're, you have three options here, you could have students do this independently. This step would be independent, but you could have them moving towards working in a small group, or if this is brand new, I would almost have you working towards doing this whole group until you understand it a little bit better. And then as students spend year after year with you, then you could move into like a small group or independent model. But if this is your first time and their first time, I would recommend doing this whole group. The bottom line is that the bigger the group, the less time you want to give them to generate examples. So if you say five minutes and you have 25 students and they all just had five minutes to generate ideas, you could potentially end up with hundreds of ideas. So the bigger the group, the smaller the amount of time you want to give them. Just as short as just one or two minutes even would suffice to just really get this started at first. So you can always say, hey, you've got one more minute, go come up with additional examples. But you'd rather do that than, than them have so many that it's going to take, you know, months to sort through. But you ask students to generate as many examples as possible. So for example, if your universal theme is patterns, you say, all right, kiddos, you've got three minutes. I'm going to give you lots of little small strips of paper on each individual strip. I want you to write a different example of patterns. And so maybe that's where you get started. So just giving students time to generate examples. After that, you bring everybody back together, especially if it's your first time, I would do this probably whole group so you can help kind of manage and monitor and, and kind of figure this out alongside them as far as how the flow and pace will look. But what you're going to do next is you're going to have students sort those into categories. So I always just pick a student and I say, hey, give me one of your favorite cards. And so maybe they give me an example. Let's go to the universal theme of conflict. And you say, give me an example of conflict. And the student says, oh, I've got one right here, cat versus dog. And you say, all right, I'm going to lay that here. And anybody else, does anybody else have a card that has something in common with cat versus dog. Ooh, I do. I have cat versus mouse. Oh, I love that. That could be an example of conflict. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that right here. And so you're going to say, all right, who else has something in common with that? Ooh, I had the same one. I had cat versus dog. So I stack those on top of each other if they're the same. And we do that in a, until we've kind of exhausted that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anything fit there? No? Okay. All right. And then maybe find someone who hasn't been as engaged yet. All right. You give me one of your favorite cards. Oh, I have an example of conflict. It's mom versus dad. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, let me start a new pile here. It's going to be a column that goes up and down. So we've got mom versus dad. Does anyone else have a card that has something in common with mom versus dad? Ooh, I've got brother versus sister. Oh, we love that. We're going to add that to that column. You're going to do that until you've exhausted all of your cards. Something really important with the Taba model is that you cannot have an other category. You can't have a random category. You have a don't fit in anywhere else category. Every card has to fit. So say we get down to that very last card, 
It doesn't really fit into any of these categories. Well, that's okay. We can reposition some of the cards, right? They're fluid, they're flexible, they can move. So you have that student share what they have left. And then we look back through everything we've come up with. Are there any of these cards that have something in common with this that we could move over? Okay, now we've got everything sorted into a category. The next step is to go back one category at a time and think about what those characteristics had in common and then label those categories. So now we're going to go back and this was, you know, cat versus dog and this was cat versus mouse. Maybe these are, it could be different things depending on where it led. It could be conflicts in nature, um, conflicts with animals, whatever that looks like. We're going to, as a group, kind of decide on a title and we're going to name and label that category. After that, we're going to do the most important step. And this is writing generalizations. Now the generalizations have to be true about all of these ideas under this universal theme that students are working toward concept attainment with. So let me show you just a little bit more of an example of that process. So if you look right here, I assign this. Um, so we, we do this physically pencil paper first. We're touching and moving the cards. Once we get them just right, I actually start a very blank, simple Google Doc. And I have students go in and edit that. So I'll say, hey, I'm going to give you this column. Will you take all of these cards that we came up with? And I'm going to send you back to your seat. See, will you start column one? Collect the next one. Hey, I'm going to send you back to your seat. Will you start typing in column two? That's great to work on those digital literacy skills with a shared document. Sometimes we're, hey, you're in my column. It's a great time for us to start understanding how we affect each other when we work in a shared Google space. This is certainly not necessary, but what I like is this is something we print and every student gets a copy of, and this is something we refer back to all year. Um, I actually use the Nikki's brand of folders that have a clear insert in the front and in the back, and this is actually something sometimes that I have students slide in the back pocket of that folder so that they're referring back to this all year long. So I do this um, this way once we do have everything finalized. We take that extra few minutes to get a digital copy of it so that we can refer to it online throughout the year. We can go back and add to it. I mean, you could hang this in the classroom. You could do a lot of different things, but I would find some way that this could be once we kind of get there um, and we and we have all of our categories ready, could we put this in a more permanent place um, so that we can refer back to it? The last step is that most important step, and I wanted to zoom in on this. So this would have actually been on my Google Doc. This was at the bottom of that document, but this is where students are working together in a shared space to come up with generalizations. So again, these have to be kind of overarching ideas that are true for all of the cards that we see um, out and about on our in our kind of space with this Taba model. So you'll see things like change is natural. Um, change may occur with people or in nature. The categories we had come up with this particular year, they all fit there. Um, sometimes it might be changes everywhere, right? Like, look at us. There's there's going to be change. It's inevitable, right? It's going to always be happening. We can't avoid it. So this is really that most important step towards that concept attainment is once we finish kind of doing the Taba model, that last and most important and most challenging step is coming up with some generalizations about our universal theme. Again, we are adding to this all year. So whether you kind of do this somewhere and you display it in the classroom and we can come back and interact with it and add to it, maybe we have a digital workspace where we can add to it, update, print a new copy. Um, but you do want this to be something that you're revisiting throughout the year. But this is always where I launch the year from. Then if you are like, yeah, I got that. We've been doing top of model for a while. I wanted to share with you the Gateway Gals. Um, I am fortunate enough to have them as colleagues. So I know them quite well and the work that they do in gifted education is incredible. Um, so if you're thinking about, okay, I've got that, but where do I level that up? How do I take that to the next step? Well, they actually have a blog post about this. And so I wanted to just kind of share with you a couple things. Be sure you find them on Instagram at gateway underscore gals. And then also they have a blog post specific to this idea. And I really love the way that they move beyond Taba. So even if Taba is familiar to you, I'd love for you to go to their website and check out um, this particular blog to kind of see next steps with that. I love some of their ideas and I plan to adopt some of them myself this year. So be sure you give that a peek. And then last but not least, um, be sure you come see me on Instagram. I am sharing ideas daily throughout the month of June. Um, some of my favorite ways to start the year, some of my favorite ways to kind of launch the, the year and set the stage, but then also just some of my favorite units. So be sure you are with me over on Instagram at Little Miss Gifted. I would love to see you there and be sure to send this to any general or special educators. Um, I am sharing ideas daily that would help all of you. So again, nine years in general education before four years in gifted ed. I really do think I've got a little something for everyone. So please be sure you come see me over on Instagram at Little Miss Gifted.